Okay, so now that we have Unity all set up, let's do a quick test and actually import an HDA that has a top network in it so that we can mess around with how to use the PDG asset link and see if we can create some uh, random variations of boxes. All right, so let's jump over into Houdini and get things started. All right, so one thing we need to do first to get all this working is I'm going to select my top network and hit Shift C on the keyboard. And what that, that's going to do is it's going to put it into a subnet for me. All right, so I'm going to call this my IP uh, test tops node, I guess. I think that'll work for now. And what I want to do is I want to have a, um, a null node basically act as the visible object for this particular um, HDA because I really just don't want it to show up inside of Unity. And so this null will just be placed in, in, instead. But we do want to have the functionality of our top network, which makes this really cool because as you'll see throughout this course, this top network basically becomes our control center, our, our hub for everything procedural for our level. Okay. And it, it, at this point, it works exactly like any other HDA, except that we're able to now interact with top networks, which is amazing. Uh, so I find it quite cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as an HDA. So we're just going to call it IP test tops like so. And I'm going to save it into my uh, project directory. So I'm going to go to job, go to HDA, test tops. There we go. Hit accept. And voila, here we go. So now uh, one thing we could do just to just to show you how flexible this is, we can go and let's hide all our default parameters here. All right. And inside of our HDA um, or our wedge node, actually, we can actually go and expose our start and end. So if I expose the start and end here, so this will be our uh, min scale and this will be our max scale. So we'll just uh, stick to that for now, just so we can test. So say max scale. All right, and our min for our max scale will be one and our max will be something like five. And again, we'll do 0 0.1 and we'll do five for our min scale as well for the, the, the range here. So we'll lock those guys out so we can't go too large and our defaults will be fine for now all right we'll hit apply except so you can start to see how we can interact now with top networks just like we were before with uh, just your average run-of-the-mill HDA but now we have a way to create a whole system of HDAs that basically can be run together and this is really just the the tip of the iceberg I mean there's so much more we can do with this but Hopefully you can start to see, you know, how powerful this is in just this first section. Okay. So there we go. Everything is working. We are all set up. So everything should be good to go. So let's jump back up and out and let's just save this HDA. And what I want to do is go back into to Unity over here. And I want to go into my HDA folder and I'm going to say show and explore. All right. Very cool. And let's jump in there. And then I want to go into where my Houdini project is currently so we can get that tops HDA we just created. So I'm going to go to work folder, current projects, side effects, PDG. And that's not the one we wanted. We wanted uh, course content. There we go. And we say intro to PDG, get our HDA here. All right. There's our test top. So I'm just going to put that into Unity over there. All right, so now we have our first HDA, and this will basically control a large portion of our entire level design. Well, we're going to create another one, but uh, you can imagine how uh, powerful this stuff could be. Okay, so here we are. We have our min scale, our max scale, and you can see you know, nothing is being drawn into the scene. That's because we have that null node um, displayed in our particular HDA currently, and that's really all we need. We just need this null node. Okay. And so uh, one thing we can do now is we can actually access the top network from inside using a, no a new component inside of the Houdini engine. And this is called the PDG asset link. So what I'm going to do is I have to select the HDA that has the top network in it. I'm going to go to Houdini engine, PDG, and say create PDG asset link. And right off the bat, you can see that we can see our top net one. And we can see our wedge one and our HDA processor one. And this means that we have now connected successfully with the top network inside of our HDA. All right. So what we can do is we can say, 
well, I want to go and cook the HDA processor and I want to load those results into Unity over here. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say cook node. It's going to start cooking just like we saw inside of Houdini. And it looks like we got a bunch of failed work items, basically. So we got five failed work items, but five cooked, which means that if I were to go select the wedge top node, you can see that the wedge was successful, but the HDA processor was not, unfortunately, even though it currently says success. Uh, it just means that it finished, but five of those work items, so all the work items in that HDA processor failed. Now, why is this happening? So let me walk you through, you know, the debug process. So I'm going to go to Houdini Engine Debug and open up another instance of Houdini. And I'm actually going to run uh, my top network inside of this particular instance of Houdini to see what's going on. And um, I already know the particular answer. It's actually missing or I can't find the HDA in that HDA processor. All right. And that's because our file paths aren't uh, syncing up appropriately. Okay, and so uh, once this finishes opening, I'm going to show you how you can replicate the same errors inside of Houdini. So when you do run into this problem inside of PDG, uh, you know how to fix it. All right, so this currently is the debug version. All right, and so I'm going to L on the keyboard to organize my notes, and then I'm going to jump into the uh, digital asset here, our test tops. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cook the output node here, and all these guys should fail. And there we go. So we're replicating the same uh, failures that we're seeing inside of Unity. And so what we can do now is we can actually look at the log. So if I double click on any one of the work items there, you can see it, it's saying I can't load this particular HDA because this particular HDA does not exist at this path. And that just means that our pathing is all off. All right. And so um, to fix this, uh, what I did so I'm going to go and discard all this. All right. So a couple things that we want to do. Um, I'm going to actually just call this uh, environment file or this environment variable hue environment path job. Okay. And I'm going to then reload that inside of Unity over here. Okay. So we're going to get hue environment path job. Cool. And then I'm going to go back into let me close this here. There we go. I'm going to go back into Houdini where I'm actually building the uh, tops. All right. And what I want to do is I actually want to set up an environment variable up in here as well with the same name. So I've already gone ahead and, and done that for you. It's a, a same process. Um, you just go through and declare the same name. So the name needs to be exactly the same as it, it is inside of Unity over here. Alrighty, so it needs to be that same exact name, same path, everything. That way we're, we're looking at the same HDA folder inside of um, our top networks. Okay, and so then what we need to do is we need to go back into our top network. And for our local scheduler, what we want to do is we want to utilize that new environment path. Alright, so there's my environment path right there. Cool. And then inside of our HDA processor, alright, so our, let's take a look at this again just to kind of drive the point home. So our current hue environment path job variable is looking to our particular Houdini project. So that means if we want to look and find this particular box variation HDA, let's bring up a folder over here, then that means we actually need to provide it the extra HDA folder, right? Because if we go into our desktop here, or if I go to my current project that we're working with, we need to go into the HDA folder and there's our box variations HDA. All right. So it's, a, it's all about pathing. So you just need to make sure you manage the pathing. And, and once you get it kind of set up, um, everything, you know, starts to roll from there. It just takes, you know, one or two tries. So we just need to make sure that we're looking at that same environment variable. All right. So there's our path to our project and this is our path to our HDA. All right. So with that, we should be good to go. So let's go and actually jump up. And what I'm going to do is save the node here. Cool. And I'm going to go transfer our new HDA. Okay. Into our HDA folder inside of unity. And that is that guy. So let's go and get to this one. There we go. 
So I'm going to copy the one that's sitting in my project, my Houdini project, and pass it over to my Unity project. All right, so let's go back into Unity. I'm going to select my test top HDA and rebuild the asset just so I know that everything is basically recooked. And I also want to refresh and reset and refresh once more. And that basically gets it back to the start. And so at this point, uh, because I did update the uh, plugin settings and the path here, what I need to do is I actually need to shut Unity down and relaunch Unity. That way the Houdini engine can actually load back up all the environment paths. So I'm going to shut that down and I'll be right back. All right, so I just got done relaunching Unity and PDG is ready to go. And that means that what we've done is we've basically solidified inside of the Houdini engine um, our environment path. So now Houdini, so this version of Houdini is now pointing towards that same environment variable name, same path as well. And so is Unity. All right. And we also set that up inside of our uh, TOPS networks as well. So our local scheduler is using that project path and our HDA is looking into that project path plus the HDA folder and then finding that actual box variations HDA. So with that all done, we should now have our complete environment up and running. So to test this, I'm going to go and select the HDA processor from the top node drop down here. I want to auto load the results so I get all the output inside of my Unity scene here. And I'm going to cook the node. All right, so now we're cooking. And there we go. Now we are getting box variations. I know it's not like super sexy or anything, but we now have our full PDG environment up and running. And the cool thing about this is we just created five variations of boxes here uh, from one HDA. We loaded them in and what we could do is we could actually turn these into prefabs. So imagine, you know, these are a bunch of buildings or a bunch of trees that you wanted to create from your um, Houdini HDAs. TOPS enables you to do this and so much more. I mean, we're going to build a network that allows us to build whole levels, not just, you know, simple variations of of props but you can use it for that purpose as well so with that we are now successful and we have our whole environment set up so we have houdini working with unity and the houdini engine so everything's all hooked up and ready to go so now we can move forward and start to build out our level building tools all right let's close out this section by just doing a quick review of all the things that we learned throughout this section so first and foremost we got the latest build of houdini which enables us to utilize pdg which is because it's in 17.5 all right so we then moved on and basically looked at you know how to use uh, the basics of a top network so you know we created a very basic top network with a couple nodes and we learned how to visualize the outputs and you know just really kind of got a gentle introduction to how to start working with this new uh, technology inside of Houdini all right and then we finally went and got Unity set up so we imported the Houdini engine we got tops all hooked up and working and we tested our tops network and we made sure all of our environment variables our pathing was all set up correctly and what this does is it actually gets us set up to start building a complete procedural system using pdg and tops to allow us to build large-scale environments all right so moving on to the next section what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about terrains and how we can create really really large terrains really fast with uh, tops and pdg all right thanks so much